Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Balancing Act presents Behind the Mystery of X-Linked Hypophosphatemia, or XLH. Wow. The disease affects up to one in every 20,000 people in the United States and can be described as hereditary, progressive, and lifelong. Today, we're going to be discussing how XLH symptoms can evolve over time and strategies to manage the condition from childhood to adulthood. Let's go Behind the Mystery. I was diagnosed with XLH when I was six months old. Um, there was always a chance that I would have it because my mother had it. Through my childhood, I was in physical therapy a lot. And starting around first grade, I was in straight leg braces and used walking devices as I got older. I went to school sometimes in wheelchairs. They had to accommodate me with buses. My first big surgery was a double osteotomy where they break your legs in different spots and they pin them together to make them straight. I had to relearn how to walk again and use walking devices like crutches and wheelchairs. Growing up, I didn't know really anybody but my biological mother who had XLH. So it was very lonely at points, but my mom never let me sit back and not do things because I couldn't. We would just accommodate and make it accessible for me to do everything that all the other kids were doing at that time. We're in Ottawa, Canada to meet with Dr. Leanne Ward, one of the foremost experts in pediatric bone disorders. X-linked hypophosphatemia is a rare genetic disorder that's caused by low phosphate levels in the blood. So phosphorus is a mineral ion that binds to calcium and together calcium and phosphate are critically important for keeping the bones hard and also extremely important for the hardness of the teeth. XLH is caused by what we call pathogenic variants in a gene known as FEX. And when FEX is different, it overproduces a hormone called FGF23, and that is the main cause of the issues that patients experience with this condition. The FEX variant is on the X chromosome. So if a father is affected, that means that all of his daughters and none of his sons will have the condition. And if a mother is affected, that means that she can pass the condition on to both boys and girls. Although XLH is a hereditary condition, it can occur spontaneously without any family history. In my late teens, my early 20s, I felt like my body was in the best shape that it could be with XLH. I wasn't really having a lot of symptoms. I also aged out of pediatric care, so I didn't have an adult doctor to follow up on it, and I just didn't think I needed it. I had a busy life with work and school. I knew I had this disease still, and it wasn't curable, but at that point, my body was okay, and I was thriving, so I didn't feel that I needed to manage my XLH. Most of the signs and the symptoms that a child has XLH are due to rickets and osteomalacia. Rickets is lack of mineralization of the growth plate and osteomalacia is lack of mineralization of bone tissue. And then when you talk to families though, often there's some telltale signs a little bit sooner than that, that the growth starts to slow around three to four months of age and the head shape may be a little bit different as well. Dental abscesses are frequent in this condition, that's infection of the teeth, short stature, muscle weakness and delayed walking and they also have a waddling gait which is very characteristic of the condition. They have frequent bone pain as well and they lack the typical endurance that a child would have at their age and so they're more fatigued. 
XLH is a childhood onset disorder, but the signs and symptoms persist into adulthood. They can have fractures, their bones can be very painful indeed, and they can have difficulty walking. Osteoarthritis in the hips and the knees and the ankles, and this can be very painful and lead to loss of mobility. Hearing loss typically starts in adulthood, but it can start as early as childhood. The mineralization of the tendons and the ligaments is known as enthesopathy, and this causes stiffness. Another complication of the condition in adults is called spinal stenosis, and this is when the bones in the back become narrow, and this can cause back pain and also pain in the legs, as well as numbness and tingling. In my late 20s, I was walking around with a cane or crutches or in and out of a wheelchair because my legs just weren't strong enough. More Behind the Mystery when we come back. Welcome back to Behind the Mystery of XLH. As I got into my late 20s, my body was just not the same. I was in constant pain all the time, and I was the only 25-year-old walking around with a cane or crutches or even in a wheelchair. A day out with my family would really affect me. I could barely walk by the end of the day. If I went to the grocery store, that was my only activity I could manage to do that day. My body also started not healing right. I just knew something was wrong. I definitely need to seek help for my XLH and start managing it again. But because it's such a rare disease, there's not many doctors that specialize in it. And I didn't even know where to start. XLH is typically diagnosed around the time of weight bearing, so when the child first starts to walk, and that's when the parent or a care provider will notice the bowing deformity, so that usually occurs between about one and two years of age. There's often a delayed diagnosis with XLH in large part because it's a rare diagnosis, and so healthcare providers are not necessarily tuned into the different manifestations of the condition, and it often takes a while for parents and healthcare providers to notice that the bowing deformity is more more marked than expected and not resolving as expected. When we diagnose a patient with XLH, we first of all look at the biochemistry. So we're looking for that low phosphate level in the blood and we're looking for other biochemistry as well to support the diagnosis on a blood test. Then we do x-rays. We're looking for signs of rickets on the x-rays as well as the lower limb deformity. And we do genetic testing in order to detect the pathogenic variant in the FEX gene. It's really important for family members to be aware that XLH is running in the family so that children can be diagnosed in a timely manner. It's also important to understand that serum phosphate levels may be normal in the first few months of life. So you really need to rely on the genetic testing at a young age in order to determine whether a child has XLH. XLH is a multi-system condition, so it requires a number of different experts in order to optimally care for the different manifestations of XLH. So for example, there'll be a team that consists of endocrinologists, nephrologists, orthopedic surgeons, geneticists, rheumatologists, if there's joint issues, neurosurgeons will be involved because of the abnormal head shape and the complications that can arise from that as well as hearing specialists and dentists. As a physician assistant, I manage the day-to-day -day care of patients with XLH. So when I first meet a patient, I start by learning their history. You can learn a lot more from their history than you can from most labs. I wanna know what their symptoms have been. I wanna know how it's been affecting their day-to-day -day life, their day-to-day -day activities. I wanna learn how they have managed it in the past and what kind of treatment history they have. Gathering all that information helps me put a management plan together, helps me decide what's gonna be the best thing for that individual patient. Um, so I try to educate them on the progression of the disease, a new onset of symptoms as they get older, about progression of symptoms they've had for years, and try to manage their expectations on what to expect from any kind of management. So it's important to remember that every patient is different and that everybody's symptoms will be different. Great 
care of a patient is uh, working together as a team to make sure that they get the individualized care they need when it comes to that particular patient. More Behind the Mystery when we come back. Welcome back to Behind the Mystery of XLH. So there are a lot of common myths about XLH. Uh, probably the biggest one that we find is that XLH is just a childhood disease. But the fact is, XLH affects children and adults. XLH is progressive and new symptoms may appear as you get older. So the management strategy for this is, as you age out of your pediatric care, you wanna make sure you establish a relationship with an adult provider to make sure that you continue to get that continuity of care. Another myth that I hear is that it's too late to start management in adulthood. But the fact is, whether you have no symptoms, mild symptoms, or your disease is progressing, this is a lifelong disease process that requires multidisciplinary care. So the management strategy for this is, you wanna to work together with your healthcare provider and your multidisciplinary team to come up with a management strategy that's gonna work for you. Another myth that I hear is that patients feel they can't change their physicians. So the fact is that if you haven't found a doctor that you have a good relationship with, that it is okay to go seek a second opinion and that you should feel empowered to go out and find that team that is going to work with you and find the best individualized care uh, for yourself. When a patient with XLH is looking for a care team, first and foremost, you want a member of the team to ultimately take responsibility for being the overall leader of the care team because there's so many different people involved and you want that individual to really be an expert in the care of this condition. XLH is a lifelong condition so it's important that the older adolescents and the young adults have an adult physician who can care for them as they get older. You also want a physician and a care team that has an open dialogue about the different aspects of the condition and puts the patient at ease when it comes to talking about how the condition affects their day-to-day -day life. It's important that patients with XLH collaborate with their physician on a management strategy that specifically meets their needs. So there will be, for example, medical therapy, which will involve medications. Many patients will require physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and also pain management is often very important. All patients with XLH require regular dental assessments and they will need to have their hearing tested periodically. Amplification may be required. And then there may be other aspects of the management that are brought in depending on the nature of the patient's concerns. When I was 30, I had my daughter Sophia, and there was a 50-50 chance that she could also carry the XLH gene. And at six months old, I had her phosphorus checked, and they happened to be in normal range. A few months later, Sophia began to show many of the common signs and symptoms of XLH, prompting her doctor to order a genetic test, which showed that she had XLH. I was just devastated for her because growing up managing this disease was hard. It was painful. Hundreds of hours in physical therapy, learning to walk and just be a basic human being was hard and I didn't want that for Sophia. That's when I got online and I researched XLH and I found groups and other children and families who were managing it. And I was like, tell me more, tell me everything that you guys know. Because at that point, I still wasn't managing my own XLH. As a kid, I didn't have anybody that I could relate to. And now me and Sophia can relate to each other and she sees that mommy is being brave and she can be brave just like mommy navigating through this painful disease that we will have for our whole life. I met my husband at church. 
we got married, we live in an amazing town and we're raising our children here and we're just loved on by our community. They know that we have XLH and they just support us and cheer for us. Having XLH is sometimes hard. On my bad days when my body is just not working like it did the day before, it makes caring for my daughter a little harder. I just try to keep positive and I also encourage Sophia on her bad days to stay very positive. And I've also made sure that she has a community around her that knows what she's going through so she never feels alone. When we come back, we're gonna sit down with Ashley to see how she and her daughter are doing today. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to The Balancing Act Presents Behind the Mystery of XLH. We're joined by Ashley, XLH patient, caregiver, and advocate. Welcome. Thank, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we just saw your incredible journey. So happy to have you here. Uh, tell us how you and Sophia, she's so beautiful. How are you managing with XLH? We are managing very well right now. Sophia is just thriving and she's very active in the things that she likes to be active in. and. Life is good. I recently just got married. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's congratulations, great. Congratulations, no, Thank for you. sure. You're an advocate for your own daughter, Sophia, and all their children. So tell us a little bit about what you do advocacy-wise. I love answering questions about treatment, doctors, how my daughter has navigated through this. How does it help to be part of that XLH network and be able to, I guess, be a voice? Yeah, it's great. Um, I love just being a part of it and being able to interact with different families because I have gone through it and now I have a daughter going through it. Just telling them never to give up and that they're not alone. Your XLH network is now your family. You have your personal family and now you are adopted into this other family. And just be brave because every day it's different when we're going out into the community. We look a little different. But, you know, this is how we were made. Good for you. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you went through this as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, things have changed, right? And you are now an advocate, mm -hmm. even for your daughter. How do you see things to be for Sophia today and in the future? I'm excited for her generation of XLHers. They won't have to go through what we went through as children. Also, I've made her a binder that has all of her milestones, her growth charts, her medications, her symptoms, all together. So one day when she has to navigate out of pediatric care into adult care, she has that and she can take that with her. That's great. But let's, let's check back in with Dr. Ward one more time to see what she has to say. Let's do it. So I think patients with XLH should find a care team that can adequately care for their condition and also help other family members be appropriately diagnosed. And I also think it's important to keep a record of the signs and symptoms that they're experiencing so that when they go to the doctor, they can talk about the way in which the condition is affecting their day-to-day -day life. I think it's also important to find a community of individuals with XLH so that patients don't feel so very alone in their journey. What great advice, right Montel? Absolutely. Ashley, you know, final thoughts from you. What would you tell others who are navigating through this right now? I would tell them to be brave, to be strong, and even on your worst days, they get better. You're not always gonna be at that point. And I always tell people, put a smile on your face. That helps, and that there's resources out there with the XLH network that you can navigate through and use them. They're there to help you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ashley, for being a part of the show. Wishing you and your daughter all the best. Thank Absolutely. you. And of course, we also need to thank Dr. Leanne Ward and Corey Davidson for their expertise. Great information from them. And if you want more information on any of this, you can visit xlhlink.com. And of course, you can always go to our website, thebalancingact.com, if you want even more information. <laughs> we'll see you next time.